Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Welcome to CES 2013. That's right, the International CES here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Father Robert Balasair, the Digital Jesuit, here for Twyet this week in Tech Network. And, uh, well, we're just getting started. We're going to throw in all the coverage, all the special footage that we've got from the last couple of days into this special episode. So stay tuned because we've got a doozy. We're starting here in the South Hall at Sunheiser. I'm here with Scott uh, Houston, who's going to tell us a little bit about the Momentum series of headphones. Scott, what am I looking at? Well, uh, here we have our Momentum headphone. Uh, this is a new introduction for us. Uh, leather ear pads, leather headband, uh, stylish color design, all metal construction in the headband, built-in Apple, Apple control remote, microphone, track skip volume, play pause, the whole nine yards, uh, toting superior sound quality, uh, premium looks, stylish design, uh, and really an overall uh, general hit for us. People are very excited. We're pumped up for it. Now this is a, a typical high-end headset, something for audiophiles, something that's it's stylish, it's durable, it feels really good. But um, exactly where is this market going? How do you see this developing as, as people look and get more discerning about their sound, especially the sound out of mobile devices? That, that's a great question, and uh, what we find is, along with wanting the, the best sound available, they also want the style of it too. They want it to complement you know, with their, their, their attire and, you know, their, their daily lives and really be a accessory to them. Uh, so that's what we bring here with the momentum is we're bringing the style and the performance all in one package. Now, this is not the only product that you've brought to the show. I believe we've got a couple of gaming headsets. Gaming, of course, has become a booming industry. It's something that everyone has to pay attention to because, well, serious gamers are getting serious about sound quality. Tell me a little bit about what's, what your philosophy of gaming quality is. Well, with gaming quality, we want to deliver the best audio experience, uh, both on the listening side and on the speaking side. So with the gamers that are doing a lot of chatting uh, or in the community gaming uh, online, whether it be World of Warcraft or uh, Assassin's Creed or anything like that. So being the audio company that we are, we wanted to bring the best of our sound uh, with what we do with headphones, microphones, and put it into an all-in-one piece. Uh, and also have other features too, like uh, surround sound decoding uh, or analog inputs. Now tell me a little bit about this. What, what model is, is, uh, is Chad holding up right now? That is our PC363D, uh, brand new. Uh, that one features a USB sound card, uh, which does a 5.1, 7.1 Dolby decoding, uh, so you can get essentially surround sound into a set of headphones to give you the complete game ex experience. Now, we're going to take a gander over to something that is a little uncommon. I've been told that you have a, a headset in your possession that defies, well, expectation. Tell me about this beautiful, interesting looking, stylish headset sitting in this box here. Yep, uh, this is the Orpheus. Uh, this is a, uh, a uh, was a limited edition piece uh, back uh, from uh, the early 90s. Uh, what this was is you had uh, two separate devices. Uh, it's an electrostatic headphone. Uh, this is the amplifier, uh, tube amplifier device. Uh, the headphones are connected to that. Uh, this was the ultimate uh, piece in headphones. Uh, okay, when, when you say ultimate, I, I can understand. I mean, I love tube amps. It's going to have that nice warm sound. It looks like a really well-designed headset, but uh, tell me, this is kind of pricey, so what, $1,500, $2,000, dollars uh, Closer to the tune of $30,000. Uh, this is a, a legacy product. Uh, it's not uh, currently available, but it is a uh, a jewel that everybody likes to uh, see and uh, something that audiophiles uh, are, are aware of. And, you know, we use it. We want to showcase it, show our, our history and, you know, show, you know, really what we've what we've done and what we want to use as inspiration towards the future. 
Scott, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, I, and also, you stay tuned because Leo Laporte has agreed to buy three of this for us. We're going to bring them back to the studio, see how they sound. Let's take a look at the other side of the hall and find out what else we can find. CES, day one. We've stopped by the Audio-Technica booth to check out a range of Sonic solutions. I'm standing next to my good friend, Crystal Griffith. I've seen her every CES for the past four years. And you've got some brand new products from Audio-Technica that span the range of Sonic solutions. Tell me about the core. Okay, well this is actually our clear and core models. This is our new 1499 and 1999 solution. This has clear and natural high fidelity sound. This has core base sound. So there's the big difference between the two. And then also, what's nice about the core base model is that you can wear it two different ways. These hooks actually come off. So if you want to wear it straight down in front of you, you can do that. Or if you want to wear it more like in a sport mode, you can do that as well. The nifty thing about this is that it comes with a really cool little cord wrap. Um, so it kind of comes apart. You wrap up your cord, you sandwich it together, you put it in your pocket and go. It's a really great added value for something that's that price. I love that feature because Anyone who has a smartphone with, well, let's just say white earbuds knows the trouble of having that kind of siliconized cord that gets tangled and then you just throw out. Yeah. 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 There's, there's nothing like on-the-go solutions, you know, to make your life a little bit easier. Speaking of a little bit easier, what about people who are actually on the go? You know, people unlike me, people who are maybe active, exercising, doing that walking, running, waking up thing. What do you got in your hands? Okay, we've got a new Sonic Sport headphone line that we've just come out with as well. We're introducing it at CES right now. We actually have three different models. These are just the two different models right here, um, ranging anywhere from $49 up to $99. Um, basically, what we have, though, is different fits for different types of sports levels. So you've got an around-the-ear fit for people who like that. You have this kind of ergonomic type of fit that fits into the inner part of your ear. And then we also have a behind-the-neck um, fit as well. What's great about these is that they are IPX5 rated and um, the ones that are in ear also come with this really great little ridged ear tip that allow ambient noise to come in as you're running outside or jogging or doing some kind of work like that that you want to hear your ambient noise but also want to listen to your great music so really cute cool innov innovation there for the Sonic Sport line as well. In other words a way to exercise with your mu music as you're going to work without getting run over by a car. Exactly. Okay, now we're going high end. We're going to the big daddy. We're going to my personal favorite piece of technology in this booth. This is the ANC9. Tell me about this, this gorgeous traveling, high quality noise canceling headset. Not only is it gorgeous, but we just won an innovations award for this as well at CES 2013. Um, this, wh what's different about this noise canceling headphone in particular is that it has tri-level cancellation. So it has three different modes for the different types of cancellation that you need. There's an airplane mode, which is obviously going to be canceling out a lot more lower frequencies. There is a office mode, which does kind of go a little bit more into the higher frequency range and a shorter over a shorter range of, of noise. And then there's something called a quiet mode, which is just for more like if you're, you're studying and you just don't want to be hearing any of that low noise background. Sometimes it's just kind of nice to be enclosed regardless of the noise that's going on outside. Even if it's a little bit of noise, you just like to have that intimacy and that enclosed feeling, and that is what that mode is for. It comes with all the same features that we've had with our noise canceling headphones before. It has a detachable cable for um, cordless uh, noise cancellation. Um, and then you just plug the cable right back in when you want to hear your audio. And then um, it also has, you know, obviously the on off switch and the three modes. But the biggest thing also is that it does come with a communication cord. So you've got another cord that belongs with this that will have the one button remote so that you can answer and end calls, fast forward through your music and that type of thing. It's the little features that I really like about this. Things like the fact that you can use it with your phone. Things like it, it's really soft, it's padded, it travels well, it's got a carrying case. It's passive, which means that if the battery dies, you're gonna, you, you won't be able to use the cancellation, but you can still use the headphones. But like you said, my favorite feature has to be the tri-level cancellation because we all have different ears. And what sounds good to you may not sound good to me. I get to choose the level of cancellation. And let's not forget, with that cancellation too, the highest level of cancellation is 95% cancellation. And when we put a mark like that on our box, we are not fooling. We're, we're not fooling around with this 95%. A lot of people put these weird claims on their box. They don't back it up at the dB rating. This is at a 20 dB rating, which means it has a serious, large range of frequency that it cancels noise o over. Okay, last question has to be, if they want to find out more about this lineup or any of the other products that you've got here in the booth, where do they go? audiotechnica.com.
Crystal, thank you so very much. Let's not wait another year before we say hi to one another. I mean, your, your products are too good and you're too, too nice of a person. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for being my first CES interview as well. Oh, okay. We've got more. We're leaving Audio Technica. But you know what? There's so much more. CES, day one. You know, I'm a home podcaster at heart. That's where I started. That's where I pretty much remain. And so that's why I'm so happy we're here at the Blue Mics booth. They've got a lot of products for people who may just be starting or getting into that advanced, I need good quality audio stage. I'm standing next to Hillary Money. Hillary, what would you say are the biggest pratfalls, the biggest problems of someone who is just starting to record, be it a podcast or recording himself playing piano or guitar? Absolutely. So some of the things that, that we've noticed and some of the things that maybe you've noticed in your audio is you'll get things like popping peas or plosives, those air bursts, or maybe you get rumblings or um, vibrations in your audio and you can't figure out how to get them out. Or yours isn't sounding quite as warm or rich and you're not quite sure how you should do EQ or compressor limiter or some of those more high-end studio engineer functions. And so you're just not quite getting there, even though you have a, maybe a mic or you haven't quite got that mic yet. Um, maybe, you're a, maybe you're a little afraid to get started. Maybe it's a little intimidating. Maybe you're just not sure what you're doing wrong. Now, there are ways to compensate for all those problems. I mean, you can get a pop filter. You can get a nice vibration shock mount. You can get a nice EQ with a compressor to, to do the processing for you. But um, um, I wish there was a single product that did all three. Well, let me introduce to you Nessie. That is what we are introducing here at CES. Nessie is developed to combat all of those pitfalls. So we have added a professional-grade pop filter deep inside there. It also has a industri industry standard shock mount, so your, your mic capsule is suspended up in the mic to reduce or eliminate those vibrations and rumblings. And even better, since you don't have your studio engineer sitting next to you at home, there will do studio processing in real time. It's an adaptive USB microphone. It's adapting to you. So it's going to add some of those fundamental studio processes like EQ, comp level control, DSing, it's going to take that sound so that your finished product is a lot more refined and polished without having to do post production editing. So basically, what you've done is you've given a studio into a turnkey solution that anyone can plug into their computer and automatically get the legendary blue mic sound. Absolutely. You're going to get a, a more polished, refined sound without necessarily having to know, have all the know how on how to get there. Now, Pricing availability, because I know there's going to be people out there in our audience who are thinking about starting up a podcast, and they may just want to start out with a blue mic. Absolutely. So Nessie will be $99, and it will be out in the first half of this year. Shipping is still to be determined, but we're going to try to get it out as soon as possible. And of course, if they want to find out exactly where they should go to find out about Nessie or any of the other quality products that Blue has brought to the market, they go to bluemic.com. Hillary, thank you very much for talking to us. Good show, good mic, and uh, so you've had Yeti, you've had Nessie, next year comes uh, Sasquatch? Stay tuned. Stay tuned to us, because we've got more. <laughs> We're still at CES. If you're a fan of fitness, then you probably know what I'm holding up. This is the next generation of the Fitbit, the Fitbit Flex. Now, this little device can track pretty much everything that you want it to track. Calories burned, miles walked, how you sleep. I'm standing next to Lindsay, who's going to explain to us, well, what you're doing with the Fitbit line of products. Sure, absolutely. Hi, guys. Um, I'm really excited today at CES to announce our, our latest Fitbit tracker, the Fitbit Flex. Um, it is a wireless activity and sleep tracking wristband that you wear right on your wrist, and it tracks your activity all day long. Um, and it's with you at all times. So it really makes fitness part of your everyday lifestyle. Um, the really great thing about the Flex is it's um, focused on helping you achieve your goals. So you set a goal such as walking 10,000 steps and the great bright LED indicator lights will light up and just show you how you're stacking up against that goal. And then all of your activity and sleep, um, all those stats will, they will sync wirelessly via Bluetooth 4.0. We're actually the first wristband to do that. Um, to select smartphones, um, Apple phones at CES, we're really excited to announce that we're offering syncing in late January to Android phones as well. Um, and really allows you to get access to those stats without ever having to plug in. 
Um, and the Flex comes in five different colors. It's really cool because it has a really small tracker inside it that comes out. So you can actually interchange your tracker with different wristband colors to match your everyday style. And we're offering pre-orders um, right now um, online at Fitbit.com and it'll be available this spring. And it's a really great addition to the Fitbit family. What I like about this is that you've uh, equipped them all with Bluetooth 4.0 and you're baking in the syncing ability into the background of Android. So if you have an Android device now, you'll just be able to, to sync and not even worry about starting up the app and, and syncing your data for the day. Any device you have automatically transfers its, its information up to your device. Yes, yeah, so, so we're working with, on select Android devices at the moment. We're actually offering syncing with the Galaxy S3 and the Note 2 at this time, which are two really popular phones. We, we have more devices that are going to be coming soon. So we've got the One, the Zip, the Flex, and the Area. Uh, you seem to be expanding your line and, and getting into different parts of people's personal health. Where can we see Fitbit getting into, say, by CES 2014? Um, that's a great question. You know, what we're really trying to do is offer trackers where like no one size fits all for everyone. And so by having clip-based products, um, as well as having these wristband trackers, we're offering consumers more ways to wear their devices. Um, we unfortunately don't tell um, folks too much about what's coming, but you can definitely expect more products from Fitbit soon. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. And you stay tuned because we're uh, staying fit <laughs> with CES. Okay, you know that I'm all about enterprise tech, which is why I was excited when we passed by the Plantronics booth and I found out that they have a new line of UC products. That's right, UC, Unified Communications. That's the ability to link in with software like Microsoft's Link or uh, the advanced versions of Skype. Unified Communications is sort of the future of business communications. That's why I'm very lucky to be sitting next to Jennifer who's gonna tell us all about three new products Plantronics has at CES. Tell me. What do we have in front of us? So we have basically our unified communication suite for mobile professionals, which is really great for CES because a lot of the people who are walking around in these aisles are mobile professionals. They're working, they're here to see the show, they're here to maybe buy things. So these products are all great for those people. So what we have first is the Voyager Legend UC. This is actually a two-time winner here at the show, a CES Innovation Award, uh, both in handset accessories and computer accessories. So you can see that unified communication story happening. So this is a Bluetooth headset that connects both to your PC and your mobile phone or your tablet, if that's what you prefer to use it with. Uh, so you could do Skype on your tablet. You could simply listen to music. Uh, you could also do your mobile calls and your PC calls, like Skype, like Microsoft Link, and other soft phones for the enterprise. So this product actually contains this really neat charging case. So the case not only protects it, but it charges the headset. And you can get up to 14 hours of additional talk time. So when you're at a show like this and you're making calls, you're not really sitting down to recharge your headset. So here you are, you have the charging case, throw it in the charging case, you're ready to go. The charging case actually can give you on-demand battery status. Just hit the button there, it'll tell you how much battery status both the case itself and the headset have. So this is a really great product. It also includes this desktop charging stand. It's a magnetic charging stand, so when you do touch down at your office or your desk or at home, you can just simply charge the headset by putting it in the charger there. Well, what I like about this is you've given it the ability to, of course, pair with multiple devices, but it can maintain an active connection with up to two devices, right? Yeah, so the idea is that when you're sitting, uh, you know, when you're touching down, you're at a cafe, you're not necessarily just getting calls from your mobile phone, you may be getting calls through your Skype or whatever else that you're using on your PC. So being able to actively switch between those calls is really helpful. You don't have to repair, you don't have to connect to something different, you can have an active connection to two devices at a time. Okay, let's, let's look at something a little bit different. This is great for personal communications, but now let's say I want to do something in UC with a conference table or a small meeting room. What do you have for that? So again, we have a, a product that connects to both a PC and a mobile phone. This is our Callisto 620. It is a completely wireless speaker phone. So it's Bluetooth to your mobile phone or your tablet. It's also Bluetooth to your PC using this wireless USB adapter. So this adapter has Bluetooth in it and it connects to the speakerphone and it allows you to get great audio quality for your calls on your PC and also you know, the audio quality from your mobile is very good. It also has A2DP support which means that you can actually, you know, say you're between meetings and you want to play a little iTunes or Pandora, you can actually just uh, stream the music straight through the speakerphone and get some really nice audio quality there. 
Well, also, of course, this supports the same uh, pairing with multiple devices, active connection with up to two. But what I really like about the Plantronics offerings is that Plantronics cut its teeth in offering high quality audio in difficult environments, noisy environments. And, and you've taken that technology and you've integrated it into these two products, yes? Yes, absolutely. There's a ton of audio processing work that goes into the development of all of our products. Um, the Voyager Legend, for example, has a three mic solution, has three microphones in there. That means it collects a lot of information about the outside noise and it can really cancel out a lot of that noise. So your callers are just hearing the sound of your voice. This speakerphone also has very unique audio microphones. It has most speakerphones have omnidirectional microphones, meaning it picks up everything. And you know, that's not going to give you the best audio quality necessarily. So this actually has a very unique set of dual switching microphones. So what happens is there's two microphones, and the microphone that actually picks up the active talker is going to shut off the other microphone. So there's only one active microphone on at a time, so you're not picking up paper rustling, ambient noise, anything, you know. Uh, kind of background noises that you would typically hear with a speakerphone. So those are just two ways that we've tried to do something different with our audio processing. Which I like because if Chad's in the background making obnoxious comments, I can just sort of shut them out. Now, this is for mobile use. This is for conference use. What's this big case right here? So this case here is, uh, it's kind of my, it's my personal headset that I use at the office. Um, it's a stereo headset. And I love to listen to music while I work. Uh, I'm also on conference calls, I would say, two to three, maybe five hours a day on a rough one. Um, so this headset was actually designed to be extremely comfortable. It's got memory foam on the ear cushions there. It's going to seal really well to your ear. But like I said, it's stereo, so it's going to get really good audio quality, whether you're listening to music or you're talking on the phone, Skype, whatever you're using for that. So it's PC connected to your, to your uh, via USB to your PC, but you're connected via Bluetooth to your mobile phone. So you actually have an active connection to your PC and your mobile phone. And the great thing is for me, you know, I sit in an environment where there's a lot of people. I like to cut out the background noise, so I have a headset that fits on really nice. When my mobile phone is on silent, I'm missing things that are happening on the mobile phone. But now that I'm connected to the mobile phone, I actually am getting all of those alerts, but they're coming into the headset and not to my neighbors. And say, you know, I get a phone call that I want to take private, I actually can disconnect from the PC, it has a quick disconnect cable. I can take my controls with me and I can still mute and end calls using this and I can grab my mobile phone and go wherever I need to go. Well, thank you very much for chatting with us. That's an innov innovative lineup from Plantronics. Now, if they want to find out more about the product line, where do they go? They go to www.plantronics.com. Right, we're getting out to the next booth. I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna be, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be a doozy. Stay tuned, more from CES 2013. If you watched any of the streaming about CES 2013, you know that all the buzz was about NVIDIA, about the grid, the ability to take stacks and stacks of GPUs and give gaming to non-gamers. Well, I'm standing next to Andrew Fear from NVIDIA, who's going to tell us a little bit about what NVIDIA envisions for the future of the grid. Andrew, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, what exactly is the grid? Well, the grid for us is a custom-built cloud gaming server, and the idea is we can actually take the rendering that you normally have on like a client PC or a desktop, move it to the cloud, just like you did with videos, and all of a sudden now you're getting rich graphics rendered in the cloud and streamed to basically any type of client device. Uh, we've got monitors around us that are showing off the power of the grid. We've got essentially uh, not powerful devices playing very well rendered graphics. That th this is something that we've seen in the past. A couple of other companies have tried it. What makes NVIDIA's approach different? Well, you know, we have a lot of history with supercomputing and doing things in the cloud. Uh, you know, we've we've been involved with like the Titan supercomputer, so we understand what it takes to do really, really high quality, rich remote graphics and send it to devices. And so, what we've done is we've changed a lot of things. We we've changed the density of the server. What you look at here with the server rack, we have over 240 GPUs in a single rack. You can actually stream 720 HD quality Xbox style games to a variety of different types of devices. Um, we've reduced the server latency, which is a big issue. You know, when you push the button on the joystick or, the, or your gamepad and you look for the character moving on screen and sometimes there's a delay, we've made a lot of improvements in the GPU architecture to fix that. And so we believe that now it's really the rise of cloud gaming. You know, you have, you've seen the past five years as people transition to going to the store to buy a movie or rent it, now you just go to Netflix. And we really see that as the future with gaming as well, is you want to be able to have on access to all your games and even do things like save games on the road. Like I did in the keynote, I, I was playing, uh, trying to a game on the television, I walked over to my 
Transformer Prime tablet I picked up and started playing exactly the same place I was. I got to ask, I mean, as a hardcore geek myself, uh, we've seen a sort of an evolution of the GPU in the last decade, where, where most of the, the, the focus used to be on CPU power, now you've got more and more companies and non-gaming companies talking about the power of the GPU. Why is it that you think the GPU has become such an important staple in supercomputing? Well, if you think about it, you know, just at the very basic level, everyone is uh, pretty much like a visual person. Your world, you know, unfortunately, unless you can't see, you're all about visual computing, visual processing. It really is what drives emotion to a lot of people. Um, the GPU architecture, it's extremely parallelized, meaning it can do lots of different things at once. That's what it's good at. And so as we've evolved uh, the GPU and graphics over time, it used to be a very basic programmable architecture. It moved to very programmable, and now it's all about simultaneous streams of output of just doing things like data. And so the GPU is just extremely efficient at doing this, and it turns out that's something that is absolutely needed for doing like a supercomputer in a data center. Uh, one last question, and that is, where do you see this going in a couple of years? I mean, it's great. It, it's showing some awesome graphics here, and definitely I think this will invite a new generation of gamers, but it seems to me that NVIDIA is positioning itself for selling more than just gaming power. I mean, you can sell raw power to businesses and enterprises looking to use the power of the GPU in delivering services. Uh, what's, is there a roadmap that maybe we can have a sneak peek about? <laughs> well, my CEO is here, so you probably get very upset if I gave you the entire robot. But I mean, you're, you're right. You know, people are looking at it as, I've got gaming in the cloud now. Maybe I want to do something else in the cloud. Maybe I want to have access to a photo editing or a video application or even a, you know, an operating system desktop. All those are absolutely possible. You know, we're certainly out here showing the grid as an architecture. You know, we're focused on what we do best to start with, which is cloud gaming. But I certainly see the future of doing all sorts of types of remote rendering and graphics and even operating systems in the cloud. Andrew, thank you very much for talking to us. It's, I mean, it's fantastic what NVIDIA has done with the GPU. It's fantastic what you're doing with the cloud. And uh, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Let's go down to the other side of the hall and see what else we've got at CES 2013. Now, you know I couldn't leave the South Hall without talking about some storage, so we're here at the Buffalo booth. I'm standing next to Brian Vernikoff, who's going to explain to us, well, how Buffalo's trying to change the game with NAS. As Brian, tell me about Buffalo Link. So Buffalo Link is our brand new service that allows people to access their NAS data very easily. Uh, previously, you had to use dynamic DNS, firewall forwarding, et cetera, uh, technologies to try and get access to your device. So we've created Buffalo Link, which is a portal to connect to your NAS data easily, securely, uh, just using your email address and password. So before, you had to go uh, configure your firewall. Now you can just go to the App Store, whether it's uh, iOS or Android, and just simply download the app for free, type in your email address and password, and you can access all your content. You can also do that in a browser just by going to buffalolink.com, which is what's shown on the screen right now. Type in your email address and password, and then you'll see your data. Uh, it's just really, really that easy. What I like about this is it's uh, sort of a, a NAS for the rest of us. You know, it, it's still got the Buffalo quality, the Buffalo speed. It has gigabit Ethernet. It has USB 3.0. It can support uh, RAID 0, RAID 1, uh, JBOD. But it also has this added feature of being dead simple, easy to use. Yeah, we've completely redone our UIs, and then we've added this remote capability that's just so easy to use. And you're right, we still have DLNA media streaming. You can have a lot of fun with the device, but we've taken all the headaches out of it. Now, this is not the only announcement you're making here at CES. You've updated uh, well, one of the industry's first AC routers. Tell me a little bit about this. Yeah, so last year at CES, we were the first to publicly demonstrate uh, our AC products, and then we were the first to ship them in April. So this is our second uh, generation AC products. What's really new about it is uh, we've added our high power transmit amplifiers to boost the range. We also have, for the world's first here, is a dual core CPU inside. So now we have uh, improved CPU power to improve your wireless speeds, but also so now do real-time QoS so we can prioritize your video applications, prioritize uh, voice over IP applications, and, and pr prioritize all of that. Uh, we've also included a USB 3.0 port on the back uh, so you can connect a USB 3.0 hard drive and get pretty good uh, NAS performance out of it. So basically what you're doing is you're giving us uh, the, the beginning of the network and all the storage on the network. But let's take a look at something else Buffalo might offer. A lot of people are having a Thunderbolt ports on their devices now, but there's, a, there's really a dearth of quality Thunderbolt devices, which is why I'm so excited that you've got 
these? Tell me about what I'm looking at. Yeah, so we have our two uh, Thunderbolt drives here. Uh, this one is a Thunderbolt and USB 3.0 portable drive. It's available in a hard drive, and now this one here is an SSD drive. So you can actually connect it using either interface, so you're not giving up any practicality with using it with various different devices, including PCs. Uh, so single SSD, we're capable uh, of doing about 200 megabyte per second writes and 400 uh, reads, just shown here on the right. Um, and these are daisy chains, so we have a little bit of overhead loss with that, but uh, you'll see close to 400 megabyte per second reads, and then we'll get about 190 something on the writes. So we'll stop that one, and uh, the next one is really interesting, is this uses two uh, six gig per second uh, SSD drives inside of it in RAID 0 uh, going 10 gigabits into the system and that demo is you, we're using the second benchmark utility just so I can run them both uh, next to each other and you're going to see uh, write speeds of about 600 megabytes per second and reads of 700 to 800 megabytes per second just truly about the fastest storage you, uh, externally that anybody can really imagine. So basically what you've just created is a, a video editor's wildest dream. Yeah, th this can be an incredible scratch disk. Better than any hard drive array that, that people have had inside their computer, let alone externally. Well, now thank you very much for, for showing us some of the new releases. If they want to find out more about Buffalo products, about what you're doing here at the show, where should they go? Our website's probably the best place, www.buffalotech, B-U-F-F-A-L-O-T-E-C-H.com. And right on the homepage, we have a link to our CES announcements, so you can see all the stuff we talked about. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing the vision of Buffalo. Right. And uh, you know what? Stay tuned because you know we're going to bring you more. There's more from CES 2013. You know, there are some people at CES who don't think the sun exists while the show is running, so the Twit crew came outside, and while we were here on a stroll, I ran into Tom Conrad of Pandora. Tom, thank you very, very much for talking to us. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, great to have the chance. Now, Pandora has some uh, exciting announcements for the show. You've ended up in how many devices now? Over a thousand as of CES this year. So we've been uh, we've been coming to CES for nine years. Um, actually, the first year of that, we were this little tiny company called Savage Beast that made kiosks for uh, retail CD stores. Um, but fast forward nine years, and you know here we are in a thousand devices, tons of automobiles like this uh, Ford Shelby Mustang behind me. Um, yeah, it's pretty fun to, to kind of pace out the, the evolution of the company over all these years at, uh, at the Consumer Electronics Show. Now, I can almost guarantee you that every single one of our Twit audience listeners here has heard of Pandora, has used Pandora. I mean, we all listen. It's, it's how we get our music. But I got to ask you, with the buzz you created a decade ago, how do you keep that going? I mean, it, you are a music streaming service. You are the innovator. You are the, the one who brought this to the masses. But um, how, how do you keep the energy? How do you keep the hype year after year after year? Yeah, well, for us, you know, it's all about the music. It's about getting exactly the right songs to exactly the right person so that we're just always playing music you love. We're really devoted to keeping an incredibly simple experience. You press a button, plays nothing but music that you like. And so we invest tons and tons and tons back into those algorithms that personalize the stations to your taste. And then on top of that, we work really, really hard to make sure that wherever you want to listen, Pandora is there. I mean, my God, there's a refrigerator on the showroom floor that'll stream Pandora. Um, so if you want Pandora in your kitchen, we've got an answer for you. Your living room, your bedside table, uh, and your car. Uh, a little bit of geek insight here. Uh, the other day I was showing my mother how to use her brand new Nexus 7, and I realized that she wanted to start up what she called just the music app. And it was Pandora, but she didn't know it was Pandora. It's just become synonymous with streaming music over the internet. How do you combat that? I mean, w with, with, uh, with your great music catalog, with all the deals that you signed, with all the devices that you've in, you're, it, it, there could be a danger of Pandora just becoming the music thing rather than Pandora the brand. You mean like Google the search thing? I think I could live with that. I think I could live with that. <laughs> what can we expect to see from Pandora in the next 18 months? I mean, yes, you're going to be in more devices. Yes, you're going to have a larger music catalog. Uh, maybe you'll increase the intelligence so that we get you know, better music DNA, digital DNA. But uh, what are the surprise announcements that maybe we might hear about? Well, I mean, the big thing that we've done um, recently is we've, we've radically overhauled our mobile applications. So they have just like a, a really, really polished experience. And we've brought more and more social experiences into the application, a way to kind of lean in, learn more about the artists that you're discovering. And what that's done is for the first time, we've got a consistent experience across the web and iOS and Android, which gives us a, a really exciting platform to build new features as the year goes forward. So you have to stay tuned to find out what we do, though. In other words, listen, discover, enjoy. Pandora. That's it.
You got it. Tom, thank you very much for talking to us. Yeah. And uh, you know what? We're going to go back inside because I think the sun is trying to kill me. If you own a smartphone, you probably know the name Mophie. They're one of the premier names in power cases for your power devices. Well, Mophie is trying to move into a different market, a more active market. I'm standing next to Jonathan, who's going to explain what Mophie's doing out back with an Outride. Jonathan? Yeah, the Outride is our new product. It basically turns your iPhone into an action sports camera. Um, it comes with a waterproof back or a dry land back used for pretty much any action sports activity. Um, they have mounts as well for surfboards, bikes, um, helmets, so snowboards, skis, pretty much anything you want. The kit comes complete with all the mounts you would need to go ride. Now, looking at this, it reminds me a lot of, I'm sorry uh, to bring up another uh, a competitor, of a GoPro. It's, it's a solid case, it's polycarb, it's padded, it's got a really nice locking mechanism, and it's got a series of mounts so that I could put it on, say, the handlebars of my bike, my motorcycle, the hood of my car, or on a surfboard. Um, what distinguishes this from, say, those other uh, manufacturers? Um, the main difference is that you're using your iPhone, so you already have the ability to instantly share your videos. Once you're done shooting, we have a social app that goes along with our Outride. It allows you to trim your video down, edit, add all of your metadata, your tags, you can categorize it, and then upload and share with friends instantly. It strikes me that another advantage of this would be the fact that since the phone is connected, I could actually stream live whatever I'm doing. Uh, let's say I'm, I'm riding down a trail, or, or I'm just trying to show off my latest uh, wheels. I can. I activate Ustream, I can activate Justin TV and stream live to my friends and share my content with the people who care about it most. Exactly. You can call them up, be like, hey, check out this run, and then you take off on your mountain bike and go. That's the greatest thing about having the iPhone turned into an action sports camera is there's such a variety of other apps out there, aside from our Outride app, that allow you to shoot and like make it look vintage or Super 8 style or you know, do time-lapse photography. There's so much that you can do with it, so it's not just you know, a video camera. Jonathan, thank you very much for uh, chatting with us. Now, if they want to find out about the Outright or any of the other quality products that Mophie makes, where should they go? Mophie.com. We're on Twitter and Facebook as well, too. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. We've got more from CES 2013, so uh, stay tabbed. When you think of a case for your device, you're probably thinking of something like this. Uh, you know, hard shell, polycarb, maybe a little bit of silicone on the outside something that's durable, that will protect it from the elements. But, uh, well, the people here at Dry Case have a different idea of what you need to protect your devices in an active lifestyle. I'm sitting next to Evan Hall from Dry Case, who's going to explain, well, what is that? It's actually the only waterproof case on the market that uses a vacuum seal. We have the patent on the ability to vacuum seal around electronics. And so it's twofold. It custom fits to any device inside leaving it fully functional as well as in a waterproof environment and in a vacuum environment no water molecules can physically enter and that's why it's waterproof up to a hundred feet deep and it's not splash proof it's not water resistant it's actually waterproof now I, I noticed a few things about this the first is that I can still use a multi-touch capacitive screen through the surface of the case and it it has an audio jack absolutely I'll show you how it works real quick and uh, show you how everything works uh, please do, please do. Okay, so, yeah, let, uh, in fact, let's take the, the device out okay. just so we can uh, show that there's no foolery going on here. Absolutely. We've got 90-degree rotational lock clips up top. Simply rotate them open. That gives you access inside the case. Then you can see we've got uh, a phone outside the case. If you want to uh, use your audio features, we've got the audio jack built right in. Simply plug that into your device. Slide the phone inside the case. When you've got it positioned like you'd like it, lock these clips 90 degrees inwards so you're locked in. Now to complete the process, all you need to do is take out the air. We include a hand pump with each case. Simply attach it to the one-way valve here. This is a medical grade valve. Simply attach it, give it a few squeezes, and you'll notice that the air is being removed and it customized fits to your device, leaving it fully functional. You can see your buttons still work, your touch screen still works, everything's just like normal. And my favorite is even your camera will still work right through it, so you can take underwater video, underwater photos. Um, the price point on this is $40 retail, 
and that includes the armband which uh, will float so if you ever drop it overboard or it goes in the water it will come back to the surface um, and another comforting fact about our product is even if you don't have the armband and it sinks to the bottom we're waterproof up to a hundred feet deep so even if it's on the bottom of the ocean floor or something like that you can still retrieve it and you'll have a dry device well, what I like about this is that it really is one size fit all. I mean, it will work for an iPhone, it will work for an Android phone, it will work for a non-phone. You can put a music player in there, basically anything you want to protect and use in a, a rugged environment, a possibly wet environment, will fit in a dry case. But, and I don't mean to be rude here, but I know there are going to be some of our viewers, because we've got some trolls, I love you all, but you are trolls, who are going to say, well, why wouldn't I just put it in a sandwich bag? Why wouldn't I put it in a Ziploc bag? Why would I buy a case uh, instead of just using what I got? That's a very common question. Um, there are a lot of people who use a Ziploc bag for a quick waterproofing uh, you know, solution. But what our product does is provides a uh, ability to self-test it before each use. You don't have to trust whether or not the uh, case is working. You can actually see the vacuum seal and observe it working before you have to trust whether or not it will go in the water and be protected. So the vacuum seal provides um, not only uh, a, a self-test mechanism, but also gives a fully customized fit to your device. So if you um, have an iPhone, a Samsung, any type of device will fit, unlike a Ziploc bag where you're not going to get that customization. And uh, I don't know if you know, but a Ziploc's probably not waterproof up to, you know, maybe a foot deep and we, we'll go up to 100 feet deep. So that's a, a good advantage. Yeah, truth be told, I don't think I'm going to trust my $600 phone in a, in a Ziploc bag. Amen. Well, Evan, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, thank you for showing off the dry case. And if they want to find out more about the dry case or perhaps buy one online, where do they go? www.drycase.com. See, we're bringing you all the coolest tech from CES 2013. Now, when you're going off the grid, you've got a couple of different options for bringing power with you. You could bring a battery, you could bring some solar cells, but what happens when a battery's not enough, when solar cells don't get enough light, and you need something truly, truly portable? That's why we're here at the MyFC booth, and I'm sitting next to Andreas Eda? Yes, correct. Did, did I get that right? Yeah, correct, correct. And you've got this power trek. Uh, it's a fuel cell. Explain how this works. So it's a portable fuel cell. So what we have here is... Um, uh, actually, think of it as a coffee machine creating electricity in, in an essence, okay? So you put water in this water tank here, and then you add a chemistry here. Those two together create hydrogen gas when they mix. The hydrogen gas goes into here, then that activates the fuel cell, and you can then charge. That's what I have done here before, and now I can show you how to charge out. And uh, these, these cartridges are one-time use, R uh, go, uh, would be good for one iPhone charge, roughly, and then for the internal battery, another iPhone charge. So the whole system is 9 watt hours or 3,000 milliamps. So what we've got here is we've got the fuel cell, we've got the fuel container itself, which is disposable, so you yeah. can get new ones, yeah. and then you've got a, uh, a top which catalyzes the hydrogen, exactly. and it also acts as a battery. Yeah, so that, this could also be like um, a backup battery pack that you can charge from your uh, computer if you're on the grid. But off the grid, this is an alternative when you're not weather dependent and you want instant energy. What I like about this is you have solved a problem that a lot of other fuel cell manufacturers have had when they're making portable kits, and that is once you start a fuel cell, you're going to use it all up. I mean, yeah. the, the reaction continues to all the fuel is spent. Well, if you no longer need to charge your phone, normally that would just go wasted. Yeah. But if you build a battery into the catalyzer, then that excess power has some place to go. Yeah, we can then ca capture the excess power instead of just having it wore out as gas. So uh, we think it's a good thing in order to keep as much energy as possible. So once your phone or your uh, GPS or your camera is fully charged, you can then keep the energy in the internal battery as well. Now, uh, of course, our viewers are going to want to know how much are, do these cost and how much do the refills cost and when will it be available? So we were supposed to be on the market last year in uh, already in September we had some setbacks uh, and now we are back on track so we have launched in a few markets in Europe uh, already in November last year but now we are looking at launching in 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 the US end of Q1 early Q2 fantastic and if they want to find out more about the power trek or about anything from my FC where do they go 
they go on powertrek.com or myfc.se. And uh, Chad's giving me a nasty face here, so if I don't ask you this one question, he's going to kill me, and that is price. Yes, price. So for the system, 229 US retail, and for the packs, 4 US dollar retail. And again, sounds like a lot, but not much if you really, really want to get off the grid. No, nope. compared to uh, other solutions, we think it's uh, something unique here. So, Andreas, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you for showing off a unique product. I saw this last year and I was impressed, just as impressed I, uh, right now. Yeah. Stay tuned because we're going to bring you more tech, including power solutions uh, from CES 2013. If you want tough protection, you've probably heard about OtterBox. Their commuter and defender series of cases are legendary for, well, surviving enormous abuse without cracking. I'm standing next to Jordan Vodder of OtterBox, who's going to explain to us, well, that uh, they've upped the game in personal electronic protection. Jordan, what is that in your hand? This is the Armor series. For the iPhone 4.4s, it'll also be available for the iPhone 5 and Samsung Galaxy S3, and it is the toughest case we've ever built. Okay, okay, I've heard these claims before. Toughest case ever built, waterproof, blah, 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 blah. Exactly what makes it so tough? What makes it so good? Well, I'll show you the specs to start out with, and then we'll go into what actually gets you to those crazy specs. First of all, waterproof to 6.6 .6 feet for 30 minutes, all right? Drop proof 10 feet to concrete. Absolutely zero dust and dirt intrusion. And then on top of that, the one that I find the most impressive is this thing can withstand up to 4,000 pounds of force. So it's a little bit above and beyond anything you've ever seen from us. You know, you reference the Defender series, that's really tough. The Armor series takes it to a whole new level. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen, 4,000 pounds of force. That means we finally have a case that I can put in my back pocket without worrying about crushing it. Now, tell me a little bit how, what goes into the design of this, because obviously this can't just be a standard polycarb case. Uh, I see that you've got some heavy-duty latches. It, it seems to be nice and thick. Uh, what gives it the phenomenal strength and uh, well, air tightness? Four different layers fused together to make all of these things possible, all right? So you reference those latches on the side. These are corrosion-resistant metal latches pop open really nice and easily and I'll show you that so we can see the internals of the case as well. Pop it open here, latch out, and again this back piece of the case peels right off revealing my phone. Phone drops right out, it's that simple to get to, alright? On the inside here to protect the glass, built-in screen protector. You've seen it before on the Defender series, it's a really popular feature for us. And then on the inside you see these the ridged edge here as well as the green backing. Both of those are ruggedized silicone, all right? Obviously shock absorption, but it also gives a very cushioned custom fit for the device in the case. And then if you zoom in really closely here on the edge of the case, you'll see two different materials. The inside of that is a high strength reinforced plastic. That's what allows you to put on those 4,000 pounds and not actually damage the device. It's the same material you use in industrial hammers, other things like that that really take a beating. Over the top of that, there's an overmold of silicone. More shock absorption, more strength there. Assembly of this case, really, really simple. Phone drops in, you put this back piece, which is both that reinforced plastic and silicone, as I mentioned, onto the back. Lock the edges down together, and then close the latches. Now, there are obviously a few other things that are necessary to make your phone function perfectly just the same with this case on. We've got O-rings covering up the headphone port as well as the charging access right down here on the bottom. No dust, dirt, water's getting in there. Then you see over the speaker, it looks like almost a little metal mesh. That is the case. There's a non-permeable membrane there with a metal mesh over the top so that it's not easily damaged. That allows sound to get through, nothing else beyond that. Touchscreen sensitivity, perfectly the same. Nothing you have to worry about there. It all functions just like it would button actuators, everything is all good to go, but you still got that crazy level of protection. So basically it's all the functionality that we've expected out of Otter cases, but you've raised the protection level to a crazy, insane, uber kamehameha geek level. Exactly, and we've spent a lot of time developing this case. It's gone through an awful lot over the last several months. We've taken it off of a, a waterfall in a kayak, drop it off of our buildings, run it over, all those sorts of things. So we've really put this thing through the ringer. Now, here's the big question, pricing availability. Yeah, so it's going to be available February 22nd, iPhone 4, 4S, and iPhone 5, and then coming soon for the Samsung Galaxy S3. It'll retail for $100, and then in the U.S., it'll be available at otterbox.com, AT&T.com, and AT&T retail outlets internationally as well, but I don't know the exact stores that'll be in there yet. 
Jordan, thank you very much for talking to us and for sharing the news about your uh, coolest, latest product. Stay tuned because we're going to show you not just how to protect your gear, but we're going to show you the gear that you want. That's right, more techno lust coming up at CES 2013. You know, the fine people in the chat room have often asked me, well, do I need a touch panel to use Windows 8 properly? Well, the real answer is yes, you do. If you want to take advantage of Windows 8, if you want to unlock its full potential, you do need a touch panel. And while you're getting a touch panel, why not get the touch panel? I'm here at the Samsung booth in the central hall of CES 2013, where I'm standing next to this absolutely gorgeous 27-inch touchscreen-enabled screen from Samsung. Now, there are a few things that really set this thing apart. The first has to be that it has MVA, that's multiple viewing angle, for 178 degrees of viewability. That means that if you go off to the sides, you can get a clear, concise, perfect picture even more than you can with IPS. The other cool thing about this is that it supports 10 points of multi-touch, just like you would expect from a high-end laptop, something from Acer, Dell, or HP. This will allow you to use a touchscreen the way that you've expected to use a touchscreen. If you've ever used an iPad or an iPod or an Android tablet, this should be very familiar with you. Now, one of my absolute favorite features has to be this. I can recline it up to 60 degrees. That's their ergonomic sliding design. It's patented, it's only found on Samsung products. And what's really nice about it is it just takes a light finger touch, not much force at all to, to move it between almost laying flat and almost straight up. Good design from Samsung, and it lets me know that they're paying attention to what their users want. Now, beyond that, it's really thin. As you can tell, it's over uber sexy. It's got two HDMI inputs, which is the primary way that you get a 1080p signal, which is its maximum resolution, to the 27-inch screen. It also has stereo speakers, two, three inches on the side, so that you can use this as your primary display or even a group display, say, in a dorm room. Now, what else can I say about the screen? But the only thing I can say is that if you are looking for a touchscreen, this is the very first one that is certified to work with Windows 8. Now, if uh, if you are in CES, you got to stop by the Samsung booth because they've got this and dozens of other pieces of cool tech that will enable your life in an oh-so-pretty way.